name is Zell Friends, welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today, we are looking at the entirety of Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 Explained. And before I go into this, I have watched every single Explained Poppy Playtime video before this. And I have been waiting for this video to drop. So I did not watch any gameplay, any storylines. The only things I know of are um, images that popped up in my on my Twitter page and my recommended. That's it. And, and, and of course, it means I mean I know a few like little tiny little things. But other than that, we're clear. So grab your huggy wuggy or whatever other Poppy Playtime related to our object you have in your room. And let's get right into this video. In three, two, one, boom. Hey guys, Super Horror Hi, Mike here. Hello and again, today's man. In this video, we take a journey through a nightmarish playcare as we explain the story of the Poppy Playtime up with that luggy? Chapter 3. This video will walk you just... through the events of this latest chapter in Mascot Horror Mayhem step by step, with a little theory talk along the way. So with that said, God, it's been a while back, since I've relax, worked for a Poppy let's Playtime recap video. The events of Poppy Playtime Chapter, chapter three. 3. Let's go, let's get into it. Uh, part one discarded During the final <laughs> moments of poppy playtime chapter 2 our protagonist boarded a train out of the game station Which would take them to the safety of the world above that is until poppy playtime herself Decided she needed to keep them around to right the wrongs that occurred within the playtime co factory Diverting the trains trajectory and sending our hero hurtling down a one-way track toward the playcare at which point the train crashed and they passed out. Waking back up, the protagonist finds themselves being carried by a creepy new Bigger Bodies experiment known as Catnap, who deposits Catnap. them down a garbage chute into oh. the waste disposal. Picking oh. themselves up, our fearless explorer realises they have but seconds to escape the garbage compactor before they are pancaked. After doing so, they make their way through the back rooms of a waste disposal area, catching glimpses of Catnap along the way, who seems to be stalking their every move. Oh. Eventually, they okay. reach a room with a ringing phone. But who could this mystery caller be? Who is this? Upon picking up the receiver, that... we are greeted by the sound of a child's voice. Is that voice. Elliot, is it? Hey, hey, can you hear me? Uh oh. Look The child a sends kid? the protagonist to back- Alive in this franchise? What? Factory, which can be used to charge up the power point on the wall, unlocking the exit. After leaving this room, they encounter the smoldering wreckage of the train that derailed during their escape from the game station. The child introduces himself as a little boy named Ollie. He explains oh. that Poppy needs the protagonist to help stop the evil at work within the factory but warns that Catnap, the last of the remaining smiling critters, will try to stop them at every turn. Oh. Play care is straight ahead. It's the home of Catnap, one of the smiling critters. There used to be eight of them, I think. Now it's just him. Did he eat them? Here is his church, his hunting ground. Oh, and by the way, my name is Ollie. Of course, now you and tell us your name. All right, play care. The protagonist then boards the Elliot Sky Rail, Express. which travels them directly into the heart of a play care, located within an enormous sky dome situated in a cave deep below the factory. Above. Whoa, 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 whoa! While riding the Sky Rail, we hear a welcome message from Playtime co-founder and master inventor Elliot Ludwig, who recalls his grand. How far does this factory go? I mean, we've seen how far the subterranean tunnels and workplaces of the factory, but this is a whole different field of subterranean workplaces. Ambitions for this place. These children deserve to smile. They deserve to love. And they deserve a safe home. That is why it is with enormous pleasure that as the founder of Playtime Co., I announce... Playcare, our very own on-site orphanage. 
Elliot created the playcare as an idealistic oh, orphanage crap. for children without a place to call home. Everything a growing child could need is found here, aside from natural light. There's a school, yeah. a playhouse, a toy store and a counsellor's office where children could speak to adults in times of need. At the top of the playcare stands Home Sweet Home, the orphanage building itself, where the children would retire to their beds by night after a long day of play and learning. In the centre of the playcare are a series of statues featuring the iconic Smiling Critters. These were smiling mascots who once had their very own TV show, as well as a line of plushies that expelled a soothing scented spray when their drawstring was pulled helping children oh. around the world gradually fall to sleep. However, news reports spoke of how one toy in particular, Catnap, left children with horrific nightmares, and was swiftly pulled from production. Now with controversy growing, Playtime Co. has announced the recall of all Catnap toys from the Smiling Critters line. His image cleared from all promotional material. But damage already done, will disappearing be that easy? The exact cause of these incidents still unknown, only one thing appears glaringly certain. Your children are not safe with catnap. Oh, so that explains the smoke that he's protruding it and the gas the mask. catnap plush may have accidentally gone into mass production with the red smoke as its scented spray. The red smoke was a sleeping gas used on the orphans within the playcare facility and expelled by the living version of Catnap who resided here. It was Catnap incredibly was, on, expelled by the living- Catnap was used to administer the red smoke to, to, to play care children. Oh. ...version of Catnap who resided here. It was incredibly potent and sent the children into a deep sleep. From a VHS tape found near the beginning of the right, chapter, VHS we learn that tapes. this red smoke caused certain children to hallucinate and have vivid nightmares, as well as becoming oh. sick much to the dismay of their carers. Catnap had the red smoke in the room. Then suddenly, there was this scream. <sighs> Nightmares happen, I know, but this, I mean, dilated pupils and quivering lips. The way her eyes darted around the room, and I swear, her hand and mine, it felt like her blood was boiling beneath her skin. The scientists at the facility were using Red Catnap. smoke put the orphan in, orphans to sleep so they could be secretly transported out of the play care and, oh, experimented on. So I guess uh, Matt Pat was on the right track when he was predicting uh, how play care 3 would come out when the trailer, first uh, teaser trailer came out probably like over, well over a year ago, I think. Um... <clears throat> So I guess he wasn't that far off. I mean, in extent, it's as far as I can remember him talking about that video. It's been a while since I've seen it. Nap and the red smoke <clears throat> to put the orphans under their care. And yes, sleep, I know he's leaving you then too. Then conducting horrific experiments, turning them into the horrifying living toys we now encounter as we journey through the desolate factory. More on that later. Below the Smiling Critter's statues okay. is a room where Ollie is able to send keys for the protagonist to collect up so they can unlock various locations throughout the playcare. First stop is the gas production factory, where the red smoke is produced. Ollie explains that this red smoke must be diverted in order for our hero to continue their journey into the depths of the facility. All that gas you see coming from the machine is made right here in the factory. It's called the Red Smoke. Right now, it's all headed off to the right. We need to make that Red Smoke go left instead. That's how we can get to him. Cat Mission in hand, the protagonist sets off to connect up the power grid within the factory and begin diverting the gas to clear a path forward. En route, they discover a new upgrade for their grab pack, a purple prototype hand labelled for Grab Pack 2.0. This new hand allows users to jump high in the air when making contact with purple plates. And it also huh. allows for far greater reach, which comes in handy when trying to connect up circuits throughout this new area. Oh. Using this new upgrade, the protagonist makes their way through the gas production zone and hooks up the power. However, after turning on the machine, the power cuts out, and we are plunged into darkness. 
Ollie explains that someone has cut the power and so instructs the protagonist to return to the playcare and enter the home sweet home orphanage. There they can restore the power using the backup generator. Why is the backup generator in the orphanage house? <clears throat> is my question. Upon entering the home sweet home orphanage, our hapless hero is inadvertently exposed to a high dosage of red smoke and finds themselves trapped in a hallucinogenic oh. nightmare. While exploring the haunting hallways of the orphanage, we come across a series of creepy radio broadcasts, which tells the story of the mangled body News of report a report details the body of a child found at the home of the late Elliot Ludwig. Was this a setup to... to besmirch his good name and deflect attention away from playcare. Child discovered at the home his, of Elliot the death of his Ludwig child after his passing. From chapter two that we it learned about? It is unclear whether this body was planted to deflect attention away from the nefarious goings on at Playtime Co. and to set up Elliot Ludwig as a fall guy, or if this pioneer of children's entertainment wasn't really the sweet old man he was once portrayed as. It's sickening. Elliot Ludwig was a great man, and those who knew him understood that he was not capable of violence, let alone what others now claim. He had a deep love in his heart for children like this one, making the actions of whoever planned oh, the this photo changed. all the more sick. We look forward to clearing his good name, both in the public eye and in the eyes of the law. While navigating this nightmare, the protagonist periodically runs into Catnap as he stalks the halls, never attacking, but rather ominously watching their every move. Oh. Eventually, they reach a room with a VHS ah, tape. This explains. The tape seems to be speaking directly <clears throat> to the protagonist, hinting that they were once a worker at the factory who is now returned to be haunted by the very inhumane experiments they once helped create. You're unhappy with this. And should you come back? Years later, your conscience finally getting the better of you. May you descend into the dark and the dust, finding all that awaits you are incomprehensible. That is such a creepy forms. face. Each hungry for your return, each eager that they might find you. Or perhaps they won't allow you such time to figure your place in the world you'd left. A world that's theirs now. Welcome home. Oh, that explains this Huggy Wuggy. At the end of this recording, a nightmare version of Huggy Wuggy crawls out of the television screen and chases the worker down. However, this was simply an illusion. After being eaten by Huggy, the protagonist awakes within the playhouse unscathed and continues onward huh. in search of the backup generator. Okay, so it's just a nightmare section. That makes it sense. isn't long before they come across a new piece of kit. This time, a very handy item indeed, the gas mask. The gas mask. Which allows them to navigate areas flooded with that intoxicating red smoke. Using wind-up race cars to clear debris and batteries to power up doors, the protagonist begins making their way into the depths of the orphanage. In one room, they discover Kissy Missy, who sits on a bed cradling a oh. photograph of a little girl in her paws. It seems this is where she went. Girl is the child now trapped. Kissy Missy eliminates over her fate, remembering the child she once was. Oh. That would kind of explain a lot. Inside Kissy's bigger <clears throat> body, an experiment of a play care who met a fateful end at the hands of the scientists and now lives on as a giant toy. However, unlike Huggy, Mommy and Catnap, Kissy seems docile and does not pose a threat. We find further evidence of the experiments the scientists conducted on the orphans Void. of the play care Experiment when unearthing one, three, this two, VHS two. tape. On this tape, we hear a scientist designate an experiment number to a child called Kevin who he refers to as a subject. Santa preps a child subject for experimentation when another child interrupts him. Playtime hid the fate of the orphans from one another. However, the scientist's log is interrupted by another child who questions what is going on, and then must be reassured that everything is okay. Though highly irregular, 
We've pulled him from the home sweet home just before lights out to perform. What are you doing with my friend? I, what are you doing out of bed? How did you get in here? Is Kevin sick? Why did you take him away? I, I, yes. Kevin is very, oh. very, very sick. But we want to make him better. But he can only get better if we take him to where we can provide proper care and give him proper rest. In the Home well, Sweet Home building, we find more and more evidence of the nefarious goings on at oh, Playtime I don't Co. Like that. Giant rotating statues with inbuilt cameras that monitored the movement of the children. One way glass and it's windows, just creepy in and of itself. sleep patterns and changes in behavior. And sanitation stations for caring for those who had fallen ill as a result of exposure to the red smoke. Eventually, the protagonist sure wasn't locates the backup generator <clears throat> and restores power to the play care. As they leave, they are jumped by a familiar face. No! No! Let go! They didn't do anything wrong! We're actually here to help. <sighs> that was close. This place makes her tense. I'm glad that Ollie could help you get this far. He's the reason we found you at all. You deserve an explanation. Come on. So Kizzy Missy almost kills us. Doesn't mean them harm, but she does need their help to stop the monsters that have tortured them. She explains the monsters didn't act alone. They were driven by the influence of a mysterious entity experiment. The prototype. Zero zero. He's back again. Also known as the prototype. An entity who claimed the remains of Huggy Wuggy and Mommy Longlegs to assimilate them into its own body absorbing their consciousness in the process. Oh, I didn't know that part. He explains that the prototype was in fact the creature who locked her away for so very long in the case where we first found her. Oh, so it wasn't the company. Interesting. The prototype knows we're coming by now. You try to escape, he'll kill you before you ever reach that front door. He's the reason I was trapped in that god-awful case for so long. You have no idea of the things he's done. Let me help you kill him. Let me help you save everyone. We've all seen you. How capable you are. You killed Huggy. You killed Mommy. You freed me. You are perfect for this. So, we got confirmation that Huggy died. And he didn't make it back up. Well, he, he still, I guess he made it back up the pipes. Or supposedly made it back up the pipes. But then that would be an interesting way to kill off the guy. I mean, we've all been wanting him to come back. Maybe he did get get away. Or at least I'm hoping he's alive somewhere. Catnap is coming. He's the final obstacle the prototype has placed against us. We can't stay here. Keep yourself safe. Ollie will call you. Major Lord Drop. The schoolhouse! After descending back to the playcare with the power restored, Ollie gets back in touch to explain the whereabouts of our next destination. He sends the protagonist to the schoolhouse to turn on the backup generator there. Once inside the school, Ollie tries to warn the protagonist of an entity residing within, but his signal is cut short before he can go into detail. We then hear a surprisingly chipper voice call to us over the intercom. This is Miss Delight speaking. Please excuse the interruption. Students, remain in your seat until the bell has rung. And no going in the halls without a home pass. Wait, I recognize you. Uh-oh. Yes, I remember. You used to work here. How are you? Alive. This is the voice of Miss Delight, Ugh. the last remaining teacher at the school. Miss Delight is a shambling doll who can only move under the cover of darkness, stepping forward as lights flicker on and off. We must maintain eye contact with this giant disfigured doll. My first impression on the face that it was a messed up incarnation of the Annoying Orange series. That was the first thought that came to my head. I didn't realize it was a doll to prevent when I saw the images online. Up to us. As we explore the school, we discover a series of notes which explain Miss Delight's tragic backstory. 
You see there were once many different versions of Miss Delight teaching within the schoolhouse. She refers to them as her sisters. Find my sisters and I to learn facts across a variety of subjects. However, one day the teachers found themselves locked inside the schoolhouse, and without a food supply, they began to starve. Oh. Without children to teach, their minds wandered, and Miss Delight became unhinged. She craft a makeshift weapon from a ruler and pens to defend herself as her sisters began to turn on her. Miss Delight even gave this weapon a personality and named it Barb. Eventually, she lost her mind and believed Barb was speaking directly to her, willing Ugh. her to kill the other teachers and then feed on their corpses in order to survive starvation. Now she is the last remaining soul wandering these eerily quiet halls. We learn that it was Catnap who sealed the Delight sisters away in the schoolhouse. Oh! From a videotape, I it would be the insinuated that this was because Catnap knew these teachers may harm the children of the orphanage after the outbreak of the factory occurred. Please, where are the children? Are they in the same place as the employees? No. Are the children safe? Yes. Huh. Can I see them? No. And that was it. That's all he'd tell me. Probably because he knew I'd kill them all. <laughs> After powering Eesh. up the generator, Mr. Light attacks the protagonist, who must then use their wits to survive her onslaught. Eventually, after a lengthy chase, they manage to trap the cannibalistic teacher under a shutter, crushing her in the process. Oh, well that, 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 that's the end of her? Huh. After leaving the school, our hero emerges in a network of caves outside the Playcare Dome. Here they discover the third and final upgrade for this chapter, a flare gun. The flare gun can be used both as a way to ward off enemies, as well as lighting, lighting up the forward area. in particularly dark areas. Makes Making sense. their way through the caves, they discover a horrifying sight. Catnap stands before a shrine he has built for the prototype. Oh. In fact, this shrine may give us a rough idea. Could this, this be the revealing the prototype design, or is it more symbolic, imaginary? Ooh. Of what the hideous entity the actually human corpses. Like. We see Catnap worshipping the, the prototype as, as if he were a god. god. We oh. learn <sighs> why this is via an ARG for Poppy Playtime that released ahead of Chapter 3's launch. There was once a child called Theodore Grambell. An orphan He'd been selected care. as a potential candidate for the Bigger Bodies Initiative. The process of transferring a child to brain... Theodore Gamble had been shortlisted as an ideal candidate for the Bigger Bodies Initiative. ...and nervous system into the body of a toy. The prototype befriended Theo and then tried to help him escape before he met a fateful end. Unfortunately, during their escape attempt, Theo was injured while using a grab pack. The only way for the prototype to save Theo's life was to return the boy to the scientists they were trying to escape. Unfortunately, this led little Theo to be used in their latest Bigger Bodies experiment, Ugh. Catnap. As Catnap, Theodore Gramble continued to worship and idolize the prototype and became a further bonded to him. This is later confirmed to us by Ollie, who seems to have knowledge of the incident. In Catnap's eyes, the prototype is a superhero and has saved this place. So Catnap treats him like a god, killing everyone that opposes him, us included, if we're not careful. A VHS tape sheds some additional light on the character of Catnap and his relationship to the prototype. We hear the voice of Head of Innovation, Leif Pierre, speaking Pierre to, again. to the creature who it seems was kept within a prison cell beneath the playhouse when not interacting with the orphan kids. Is his, uh, voice thingy still broken? I didn't think he'd be able to talk. Theo, nobody's gonna save you. This prison is where you belong. We'll let you out here and there to go see the kids in play care, but your home is here. And as for the prototype, his home is in the labs. No, would you this stop? Is your life now? Get used to it. 
From this recording, we really get a sense of the neglect these bigger bodies' experiments were dealt at the hands of the Playtime Co. employees responsible for their creation. Mm. The Playhouse. Next location. The protagonist realizes that the only way out of these caves is through the Playhouse, an area of the play care Ollie explicitly warned them not to enter. Is that where Catnip lives? Moments after setting foot in the play care, it becomes obvious why, as they are ambushed by a host of miniature smiling critters, and they are not friendly. To ward off these plushy sized predators, we must use the flare gun to send the critters scurrying back into the holes they crawl out from. Ugh. After making their way through the playhouse as hordes of smiling critters give chase, the protagonist finally reaches the aforementioned prison block. Here they encounter the last remaining smiling critter from the bigger body's initiative, Dog Day. Oh. Or rather, what's left of him. That thing, Catman, the prototype is his god, and this is what he does to heretics. These little toys follow Catman to avoid that very fate, and in return, they are fed. <clears throat> we try to fight it. The prototype's control. I am the last of the smiling critters. Dog Day oh. explains that we are Poppy's, Poppy's angel, angel, brought to this place to save them all. This suggests that it was indeed Poppy who summoned us back to the factory all those years later, promising us answers to the mysterious disappearance of our co-workers. Oh. Dog Day urges the worker to leave, but at that moment the mini critters crawl inside his skin and take hold of his body. They then use Dog Day to hunt our hero down as they flee the maze-like oh, halls shit, and his and eyes the spaces too. of the playhouse. We narrowly escape Dog Day thanks to the purple hand, which springs the player across a gap and into the elevator back to the surface. The counselor's office. Returning to the relative safety of the playcare's hub, and in our protagonist no wonder it took so long to for them to make this. Ollie, who is able to reconnect after losing signal. Ollie explains that the final backup generator is found within the counselor's office, and so this grand building is our next destination. The counselor's office was a place where the orphans could come to speak of their troubles, and was also somewhere where they could be sneakily monitored by playtime staff. It Ugh. also seems yeah. that these offices were where the heads of each department worked from. The main base of operations, so to speak. Oh, okay. While exploring these offices, we come across two different VHS tapes. The first is an emergency broadcast, dated August 8th, 1995, where a company wide danger alert was issued. At 11.01 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, an unknown hostile force was declared present within the Playtime Company facility. Personnel are to begin enacting emergency evacuation protocols immediately. The broadcast cuts out, and an eerie message is displayed. Open the doors now. The hour reads, of joy has arrived. The prototype. Open the doors. The hour of joy has arrived. The second recording is found in the office of Stella. Oh, Stella! Graber. Long-time fans will remember that Stella took a job at Playtime Co. From and Chapter One. Rose through its ranks. Starting on the toy production line, it wasn't long Working before Stella became line. a key part of a secret Bigger Bodies initiative experiment conducted beneath the Game Toy Master. Factory. Stella was Game made Station, head of rather. Playcare, in charge of looking after the orphans and seeing that those who didn't end up as part of her employees' inhumane experiments found good homes with potential adopters. In this chilling recording labeled Hartman the Hartman Incident, Incident Stella discovers that a oh. child she had set up for adoption with potential parents ended up unavailable after being selected for testing. I understand you want to give Jeremy that home? Yes, and we would like to adopt. Ah, amazing! You'll be perfect for... Oh. What? Well, it appears there's been some complications. Complications? What kind of complications? You gotta lie your eye out of this one. I, I don't know. Um, the form says testing. <laughs> what does that mean? Tell us, what does that mean? Miss Graver, we deserve a better explanation than that. Don't you think? You're in charge of all this! How could 
could you not know? And why are we only finding out about this now? I... I don't. I'm sorry. Ugh. This makes it crystal clear that not all employees at Playtime knew of the horrible experimentation being conducted on the orphans. Yeah. The regular factory workers who became involved in the adoption program assumed that the children living inside the playcare were being well looked after, with no signs of neglect. This highlights just how secretive and careful Playtime Co. were when it came to covering up evidence of their misdeeds. Mm. The protagonist eventually locates the power room, and after rewiring the electrical circuits, is able to get the backup power online. There we go. The only way back is through an area of the building filled to the brim with red smoke. And here they are attacked by Catnap, who rips oh, off no. their gas mask, sending them tumbling into another nightmarish Find hallucination. The flower. Oh. During this hallucination, Poppy speaks over cryptic imagery, which confirms our suspicions of exactly what went down at the toy factory. The orphan experiments, the living toys that went rogue Huggy. and attacked everyone, and the fact that our protagonist themselves was once a worker somehow involved in all of this, now returning to their old workplace many years later. But was he involved After with the waking from this But was he involved with the experiment or was he a regular worker? Trans, here comes Catnip. Catnap finally addresses the player and instructs them to leave. The protagonist returns to the play care. They hook up the final backup power inputs into the room beneath the statue. Then Ollie gets back in touch to send them a battery which can be used it to fully charge out of the gas production machine and divert the red smoke so they can descend into the prototype's lair and end this madness once and for all. Catnip showdown, the final boss fight, here we go. After heading back into the gas production factory, the protagonist attempts to slot the big battery into the power unit and finally drain the gas, blocking uh -oh. their path forward. Just as they do so, Catnap emerges from behind a nearby door and floods the room with smoke. This causes a hallucination, where Catnap transforms into a Whoa. monstrous demon form. The protagonist quickly races over to a nearby elevator, Ugh, narrowly that's escaping Catnap. That's worse. That process. is so much worse. They then find themselves in a power room, where a mysterious VHS tape is waiting to be played. The contents of this tape reveal a scientist conversing with the prototype. The name of this scientist is unknown, but it does Sorry, sound very much like Harley, Harley Sawyer. Sawyer the man who spearheaded the Bigger Bodies initiative. We learn that the prototype went through vile experimentation at the hands of this scientist, who poked and prodded at it in search of answers. Ready to talk now, are you? I possess a question. Go ahead. Do you feel anything? This question referred to what exactly? You stick us, beat us, tear our flesh. Do you feel it? But there is a secret inside you, 1006, valuable beyond all measure. I cut and prod and burn at it, and I get closer with each session. When the Ugh. prototype speaks, we hear a well of different voices. So there's this multiple people inside. This feeds into our theory that this entity is made up from a collected consciousness of many different beings, an oh. amalgamation of different souls, all controlled by the original subject at its core. Could this original subject be Elliot Ludwig himself? Yeah, that's still the theory going it on all these years. That the prototype is learning just as much from the scientist as the scientist is from it which explains how it was able to cause the outbreak at the facility. Thank you. You thank me? Absolutely. I learn something new about you every day. After learning this information, we run into Catnap one last time. Using the machine at the center of a power room, the worker must periodically set off steam pipes to scorch the predatory feline as he closes ground. Although not all of these catnaps are real, some are simply hallucinations, 
and we can actually use our flare gun to tell which is in fact the genuine article. After surviving Catnap's okay. advances and fully powering up the machine, the protagonist overloads it with their grab pack hand. This electrifies their hand and allows them to pass the electrical current directly into Catnap oh. as he pounces. Oh! Burn him! Catnap is set ablaze, he staggers to his feet, scorched and dying, and just at that moment, a hatch opens from above, and the prototype extends its hand. Initially, Catnap is afraid, but quickly embraces his master's wishes oh! and surrenders to his god. Theodore and the prototype becoming one in the process. So that's how he dies. The hour of joy. The incident. With Catsnap terminated, the protagonist is finally able to head back down the elevator shaft and power up the gas production machine. With the path ahead now clear, they reunite this with Poppy and Kissy in answer. the adjacent room. Here, Poppy finally shows them what went down at the factory all of those years ago. An event that occurred on August 8th, 1995, and was known as the Hour of Joy. I remember hearing every moment of it. It went on so long, so agonizingly long. They tried to hide, to run, anything to stay alive. You just started murking them all. And mommy started doing the same thing. Why is this happening? What are those things? Senseless slaughter. That's all it really was. Oh, and the other video we saw. Everyone. Kissy. The innocent. Was it Kissy? Denied. Kissy that did it too. Boxy. Who I think it's a, his name. It's been a while. Anything. And then, once it was all over, they dragged those corpses down below where they'd never be found, and they ate the bodies to stay alive. The prototype has to die. For this. For everything. Poppy plays a video <laughs> which shows how the prototype influenced the other bigger bodies' experiments to attack their creators. Guilty or innocent, it made no difference. No one was spared in the bloodbath that ensued. And so, with the truth revealed, it's finally time to head down to the greatest depths of the facility. The laboratory where the prototype himself resides. It's time to end it all. Poppy tells Kitty Missy to lower her and the protagonist down the elevator first, promising to send it back up when they reach the bottom. However, while descending, we hear the chilling cries of Kissy under attack. But it's too late to turn back now. The hatch seals shut behind them, and our intrepid duo are plunged into uh -oh. darkness, leaving Kissy to a fate unknown. Oh. And with that, we come to the end of this video and a look at the story of Poppy Playtime Christ. Chapter 3 Explained. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it both entertaining and informative. I very much you did. did. Remember to leave a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. That was crazy to say the least it also explains why this took so much development time it explains a lot of the lore that people have been anticipating for since the game came out i and since i got into the series in 2022 or shortly after chapter two released so it kind of explains a lot of what's been happening and I still believe that Elliot Ludwig is the prototype, which has been the consistent theory since the very first chapter. Um, so Poppy didn't directly betray us, wanted us to help. Kissy Missy almost attacks us because she thinks we're one of the bad guys. And our role in the factory is still not completely true, whether or not we were just a regular employee or if we were one of the guys experimenting on the children. And Catnip who I did not expect at all to talk, spoke. What? <laughs>
Well, either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this reaction video. Please like and subscribe all stuff, guys, and I will see you in the next reaction video. Bye!